Hi guys, welcome to the C++ programming tutorials. So in this tutorial, we're gonna learn about the templates and the generic functions in C++. So let's say in your program, you know, you have to write a function, you know, which is gonna work on the integers and the floating point number, and it's gonna do the same thing. For example, uh, you need to write a function, you know, which is gonna check for two numbers and it's gonna return the largest number. So what you can do is we can uh, you know write the function with the same name and different type of parameters. For example, let's say int, and I'm just gonna call it as max. You know that int is return type, and here it can take two parameters int x comma int y, and it can uh, return, and we can check you know whether x is greater than y. If it is so, we're gonna return x else we're gonna return y so you know now this function can work on integer type of data and if you want to write a function with the same name and uh, you want it to work for the floating point also what i can do is i can copy this paste it here and i can change this data type to float okay now you know we have written the same function you know the same logic but you know for different different data types so we can use that in our program so for example let's say max and i'm just gonna pass two numbers let's say two comma four or whatever it is and i'm just gonna build and run and we get four now you know i can pass floating point number also 2.23 and uh, 2.12 and if I build and run, you know, you guys can see we get 2.23. All right. Now, you know, we have overloaded this max function or, you know, we can say that, you know, we have written the same logic two times, you know, just to make it work for different data types. So what if we can write, you know, this function only once and make it to work on different type of data types? So we can do that in C++ by using the templates and the generic functions. And first of all, what is a generic function? A generic function defines a general set of operations that will be applied to various types of data. For example, here in this case, if we can able to write a function, you know, which can work on this integers and the floating point numbers, then you know that function is gonna set to operate on different types of data and that function is called a generic function the type of data that the function will operate upon is passed to it as a parameter you know just like the way we are passing the parameter to this max function here you know we're gonna pass the type of data that our generic function is gonna operate so we can say that through a generic function, a single general procedure can be applied to a wide range of data. So the next thing you guys may ask me like, okay, dude, what is the use of this generic function? You know, what happens or why we need to write a function, you know, which can work on different types of data. Normally in programming, you know, in many cases, Many algorithms are logically the same, no matter what type of data they're gonna be operating on. For example, let's say you have to write a quick sort application where, you know, the logic or the algorithm is same, whether you are using an array of integers or, you know, an array of floating point numbers. But the only thing that differs is the type of data, you know, that we're gonna be working on. You know, in this quick sort example, if we were able to write a generic function, then, you know, our generic function is going to define the nature of the algorithm, you know, independent of the data. So once we have done this, you know, the compiler will automatically generate the correct code for the type of data. You know, when we pass integer type, you know, it's going to make that generic function to work with integers. When we pass floating point values, you know, it's going to make that generic function to work with the floating point numbers. So in other words, we can say that, you know, when we write a generic function, we are creating a function that can automatically overload itself. And, you know, if it is confusing, don't worry, you know, when we see the example and, you know, when we use the generic function in our programming, it's going to be very clear and easy to understand. All right. To write a generic function, you know, a function which can work on any type of data, we need to use a keyword called template. And then we need to write a 
less than symbol and a greater than symbol and between that less than and greater than symbol we need to write a keyword it may be a class you know the keyword class or it may be type name you know you can use either class or type name you know both of them are gonna do the same thing and then after that keyword we need to write an identifier that the function that we're gonna define is gonna be working on so here you know just an identifier you know it can be anything any name you want to give you guys can give for example let's say identifier and then we need to write the function you know just similar to any other function declaration first we need to write the return type and then the function name and then in parentheses the parameters that the function is going to be working on and then the function body so here you know these parameters that this function are going to be working on are going to be of type this identifier so if it is again confusing don't worry you know when we see this in example you know it's going to be clear all right now in this tutorial for the demonstration purpose what we're going to do is we're going to write a function you know which is going to print out whatever values we're going to pass to it you know it may be an integer value or it may be a floating point value or it may be a string whatever we pass it to the one function it's gonna print it out so we're gonna write the generic function right now so first we need to write the keyword template and then we need to write less than symbol and greater than symbol and here we can use either class or type name keyword I'm gonna write type name and then you know let's give a name to the identifier let's say my type and then we need to write the return type of the function our function is not going to return any values so it's going to be void and then the function name let's say display and then in this parenthesis we need to pass the parameters let's say our function is going to take one parameter so here you know this my type is a placeholder name for the data type used by this function display so you know we don't know what type of data it's gonna be taking you know maybe integer float or string so we're gonna refer this placeholder here so it's gonna be my type and then the variable name let's say x and then we're gonna define the function body so here I'm gonna use a C out and I just gonna say you have passed and then I'm just gonna refer to this x and then we're gonna end this line so that's it now we have defined a generic function by using the templates you know which can work on any type of data so I can use this function display now in my program and pass any type of data so here for the demonstration purpose we're gonna call this display function so now in our program you know we're gonna call this display function and pass the parameters so I'm gonna write the function name which is display and then you know I just gonna pass an integer value now you know when we compile this code the C++ will come to know that okay this display function has to work with integer type of data and that's why you know it's gonna make it to work with integer type you know in other words we can say that you know this my type is gonna refer to the integer type and I just gonna build and run this and you get you know you have passed 10 now you know we can use this same function and pass floating point values string values double values whatever we want I just gonna pass 1.2345 and here I just gonna pass Anil Shetty rocks and I'm gonna add the codes here and I'm just gonna save it build and run this and now you guys can see you have passed 10 you have passed 1.2345 you have passed the Anil Shetty rocks you know the same function it is working on different types of data so here you know we have written a generic function you know which is working on different types of data so we can say that a generic function defines a general set of operations that will be applied to various types of data and to create a generic function in C++ we're gonna use the template keyword and you know this is how you guys can write a generic function
So this is it guys. This is about the generic functions and templates in C++. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. In the next tutorial we're gonna be learning some more about the generic functions in C++ and I'll see you in the next tutorial.